The American Civil Liberties Union filed a class action lawsuit in Los Angeles today against the Department of Homeland Security. The suit alleges immigration agents used intimidation, deception, and coercion to pressure Mexican nationals into signing away their rights for an immigration hearing. The suit is part of a new project of the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial Counties called the Border Litigation Project. At the helm of this new project is ACLU attorney Mitra Ibadalahi. Also joining us today is Aide Vasquez, a U.S. citizen whose husband is a plaintiff in the lawsuit. Welcome to you both. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Mitra, let's start with this class action lawsuit that claims misinformation, deception, coercion to get people to sign away their rights to sign this voluntary departure form. What is that form and what happens if you sign it? A voluntary departure form gives certain immigrants the opportunity to leave the United States without going through a formal removal proceeding before an immigration judge. If elected voluntarily, if knowingly elected, it's a different way to leave the United States. When you sign the form, you can be expelled from the United States. You are supposed to have a period of time to put your affairs in order. Our plaintiffs were all expelled within a period of 24 hours. Is it illegal to, to, to coerce? I understand the Supreme Court allows law enforcement to, to uh, lie to people to mm -hmm. get them to do things. Is it illegal to do this? It's a violation of your due process rights to sign away your rights without it being knowing and voluntary. And so we allege that under the current practice as it exists here in Southern California, both of those requirements, it's neither knowing nor is it voluntary. People are signing away their rights without realizing what they're doing. Well, the U.S. Department of Justice defines voluntary departure like this. If you have no way of lawfully remaining in the United States, voluntarily, uh, voluntary departure is permission to leave the country in a way that has fewer negative consequences than being removed. But that's not what plaintiffs in the case are claiming. There weren't fewer consequences. And, and with me, Aide, your husband is one of the plaintiffs in this uh, suit. Tell us what happened to him. Well, he um, got pulled over in San Diego. Um, he was using the for, cell phone. For talking to mm -hmm. me on the cell phone, yes. And um, I found out that where he was, and I arrived at the scene. And um, I guess the officer asked my husband for identification. And my husband obviously was, didn't have a California ID. And I guess the officer immediately suspected that my husband was illegal. And I arrived there and I told him, that's my husband. We've been married seven years. We have two kids together. And I gave the officer my husband's full name. And the officer's like, well, I can't take your word for it. I have to investigate myself. At but which point he took him, he took, he, he took him in? They, he, five minutes later, a Border Patrol arrived and took him. And in a matter of 24 hours? This was by 11 in the morning, by Two in the morning, the next morning, he was out in TJ now. He'd been deported? He'd been deported. Because he signed this voluntary uh, form? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, we're, he, he's in Tijuana now? Yes. And uh, what's the impact of this been on your family? For me, it's been very hard because I've had to see my kids go through so much. Like my, my, my son, for example, wouldn't eat, wouldn't sleep, would ask, where is dad at? where I want him to come home, where's my dad and my daughter as well. She would ask me, where is dad at? Where is he here yet? And I told him in a way that it wouldn't affect her so much. I told her there's some officers that won't let your dad come home. And she was like, well, what if I asked them to let dad come home? Would they let him? And I mean, what am I supposed to answer to that? Mm -hmm. It's a six-year-old asking. And, and, and right now he's in T, uh, Tijuana and you visit him often? I, I visit him at least once a week. I mean, it's very economic wise, it's very hard. And I have to be here to work. Okay. Uh, you are a U.S. citizen. I just I want to make that clear. And, and, yes, he, and he was not. Mitra, uh, a lot of people think that people living in the U.S. Uh, illegally don't have any rights. Do mm -hmm. they have rights? And if so, what are they? They do, yes. It's a misconception. Um, people living in the United States without documentation pay taxes. They have many of the same responsibilities as uh, citizens, and they also have many of the same um, rights, including the constitutional rights to due process, which attach um, to everyone in the United States, regardless of citizenship status. And that's one of the core rights that we believe is being violated through the voluntary departure system as it's being implemented in Southern California. What do you hope, Mitra, comes of this lawsuit? 
I hope that we can achieve a greater level of accountability and transparency for immigration enforcement authorities' practices at the border. I hope that we can ensure that immigrants who are presented with voluntary departure forms are provided the opportunity and the information necessary to completely understand the ramifications of signing those forms, to consult with attorneys and family members before signing any such forms, and to be sure that they are not intimidated or bullied or pressured in those very difficult situations where they are presented with those forms so that they make a knowing and voluntary election one way or the other. And Aide, your husband has to remain out of the country for how long? Ten years. So ten years. He, was he aware of that when he signed this form? No, he wasn't. We actually didn't learn about that till like um, a week and a half later when we went, met some of the ACLU staff. So does he have any options at this point since he signed the form? One of the, f one of the forms of relief that we're asking for, this is a class action for our individual plaintiffs and for those similarly situated, is that they be returned to the United States in the legal position that they would have been in prior to signing that form under false pretenses. So our hope is that he will be returned to his family much sooner than 10 years. Um, but legally, there is a 10-year ban that applies to anyone who's been in the United States unlawfully for over a year. Okay. We will continue to follow the story. Thank you uh, both so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.